Hello, hello, hello. Checking in with The Little Stranger, a 2009 novel by Sarah Waters. Um, this is for chapter, this is for chapters three and four, or uh, tracks number 18 to 30, since I've still not actually gained purchase in the paper, paper copy that I do have. Um, so, oh boy. Um, so the heirs decide to throw a party, not a giant fete, as in that they've had, like, you know, in uh, Dr. Faraday's past, in his childhood, but just a little dinner party of like 10 people. But I mean, this in itself is uh, a major undertaking for them. They, uh, they have to clean, they have to polish, um, it's, it's really stretches them and it's kind of sad. And you're like, why are they going through to all this stuff? We find out that, um, Mrs. Ayers was actually hoping to set Caroline up with, uh, one of the, uh, one of the, one of the people they invited, uh, Mr. Mason. I think he's the brother-in-law of the Masons, uh, who've, uh, who've, uh, purchased, um, is it Rutherford or something hall, um, up, up the street and are like, you know, ref doing all the refurbs and ripping out all the old stuff and putting in new stuff. Uh, and they come, but they bring their daughter with them. Their rather incredibly spoiled daughter with them. Um, when they say it's like, Oh, you know, must be a past your bedtime. She's like, Oh no, I go, I, I don't go to bed until I feel like I go to bed. I'm usually up like well past midnight. And it's like, uh, and, and the mother's like, oh yeah, we just let her run around until she kind of falls over. <laughs> just like, oh God. And it's like, you know, and, and she demands some wine until her father gives her some. And, uh, you know, she, she's like, I'll smoke or do whatever the heck I want. Basically, she's a little monster. Um, and, but they're actually still kind of grateful to have her there because, you know, something to coo over and look at. Um, in this kind of fairly awkward thing, uh, Roderick does not show up. They kind of check on him, check on him. Then the maid comes and it's like, oh, there's some issues. And so the mother goes and it's like, mm, she's like, she comes back like, uh, uh, he's got a headache and he had to go to bed. And it's like, oh, there's obviously more going on there. Um, um, but you know, and so one of the, one of them, the, the, the brother-in-law, the boorish brother-in-law, who's into advertising, I think it is, if I've not got all my people mixed up, goes over and starts plunking along on the, it's the their ancient harpsichord, which is out of tune. Uh, and the little daughter goes off with Jip, their, their, old, their old dog, and is in the corner petting and saying, what a brave dog you are, what a pretty dog you are, and touching and touching and touching. Um, and, you know, Faraday... It's like, oh, he almost, you know, was like, you know, obviously the Masons were like kind of looking to leave, but Mason kind of rather kind of passive aggressively says, oh, well, what happened next in some sort of story? And so kept it going, which he now really regrets because what happens next is there is a horrible scream and a horrible yip and the dog goes running away and the the, the girl is like, uh, and she has been horribly bitten, it seems. Horribly bitten. There's glass on the floor because someone dropped the glass. Um, and yeah, she's been horribly bitten. And they end up, you know, Faraday has to end up, you know, basically taking her to the kitchen and stitching her back together. The heirs are, throughout all this, are kind of weirdly, eccentrically rich, noble people who are like, oh, terrible, bad, bad bit of luck. Well, oh, ghastly, ghastly. Oh, well, and kind of, you know, um, you can see why the father is like really, really, really pissed off. And the mother is like, oh, trying to kind of patch things up. And they're like, why did you kind of have that dog beast chained up? And it's like, and Caroline is, you know, complete dog person is just like, no, you know, she's, why didn't you, it was your, it was your daughter provoking her. And it's like, oh, they pick a fight that way. Uh, they stitch her up, they get her home. But yeah, the Masons are like, 
you're going to destroy that dog or we're taking you to court uh, and we're suing you and there's going to be damages and all this stuff. And um, yeah, Verity kind of kind of is, plays the go between because he does go to the house to kind of check on him and he, and he hears all this from Mason. He doesn't they don't allow him to see the, the thing. It's another doctor has been brought in yet again, frozen out, uh, probably because he's there. He's the heirs man. Uh, he's, he's sort of hooked himself to a, uh, the eccentric outcasts, noble outcasts of the, of, of the thing, of the, uh, county, you get the feeling. Um, and so he, um, he goes to them and he explains to them, this is like, you know, what's happened. And they're weirdly kind of detached about it. Um, Carolyn probably more so, but it's like, no way I'm ever going to, you know, destroy my dog. And they're just, they start kind of like talking about the hall and stuff like that. And, and he's Terry's like kind of turning back. It's like, I don't think they care about the hall. I think they care about their horribly maimed child. Um, and you know, he sits and he talks with lady heirs and lady heirs actually turns the conversation to Roderick because Roderick apparently was probably having, um, you know, PTSD in his room last night. And he's like, he's messed up. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like helping him with her with that. And you do get the sense that there's a variety. He Faraday gets the sense there's a variety of things that are weighing on Lady Ayers. And indeed, she basically goes to the end of like, you know, well, I threw the party to try and fix her up with this guy because, you know, when I die and like, you know, I don't know how long, much longer, you know, when Roderick is not doing that great, like she's going to be all alone and, uh, and she's getting more and more eccentric, more and more kind of, you know, battered and isolated from society. And unfortunately, all this, and it's like they convince, they convince her, Carolyn's like, okay, you're going to have to give up the dog because indeed they go forward the thing. They go forward, this is going to be legal action. You know, how are they going to get money to actually even prosecute? And the lawyer's like, there's no way you're going to win a case where dog is like horribly maimed a kid. It's like, you know, gonna have to put the, the dog down and Lady Ayers asks Faraday to do it he comes to he comes to the thing and uh Carolyn is you know you get the sense that the dog maybe is about it with her it's like it's the only companion she has and she's kind of that oddly passive it's like you stupid dog it's like go with Dr. Faraday can't you see you're not wanted here kind of like oh it's kind of an old yeller thing I uh, really appreciate that Sir Waters is very matter of fact about Dr. Faraday putting down the dog. It's like, it's not milk and not uh, speaking of someone who's just had their dog put down in front of them um, because she was old and she was failing. Um, I really appreciate that this was not a, this was not a scene that was milked for all it's worth. Um, and, uh, you know, they put down, puts down Chip. Afterwards, he goes into the kitchen and Betty, the maid, is talking about how, you know, you know, a, the older kind of house, the, kind of what come in, come in housemaid, housemaid. It's like, I would have st put stocked my life that that dog didn't have an ounce of hurt in him. And Betty's like, it wasn't the dog. It's like, it was the thing. It was, it was the bad thing that, that, that made him, that, that maybe bit him or, 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 or pinched him or something like that. It's like, what bad thing? And it's like, she's like, there's some bad thing in this house. And he's like, oh, fuck, she's a drama queen. You know, ask the housekeeper, have you ever seen anything in this house that's out of the ordinary? It's like, no, no, I haven't. It's like, well, maybe it's a new thing. It's like, do not bring up any of this bullshit <laughs> with, with the heirs. They do not need it right now. Um, and that's sort of how we left, leave the chapter. I wonder, because this is Sarah Waters, you, I mean, you're thinking, it's like, you know, is, is um, you know, did Carolyn have some kind of command or something that made Chip, you know, suddenly bite, bite someone? Or, you know, did he see something? They were by the window. Um, you know, um, I know this is a gothic novel that's supposed to be a ghost story. Um, but I, I, you, I often, you know, I'm thinking Sarah Waters, it's like, well, what other things are going on? What, what was going on with Roderick? Um, you know, 
all this stuff. I mean, I guess you go with a dog bit a child. It's like, unfortunately, that just usually does result in the the death sentence for the dog, which is like horrible, which is, you know, all I can think of is like, you know, with children and dogs, especially when it's my dog, I always treat the children like they're, they're radioactive um, plutonium because, you know, if anything happens, um, that that's not going to go well for the dog <laughs> and, uh, not going to go well for, you know, I mean, something happens to the kid, but kids can be dumb and they can be cruel and they can be, you know, mean because they're little freaking monsters and, uh, animals will just react. It's a bad combination. <sighs> and yeah, I'm thinking about, <laughs> thinking about my think about Haley who is a good dog yeah yeah but you know if she was in horrible pain she could also nip you you know just because she's in pain it's like it's instinctive reactions and that's what happens with animals <sighs> yeah yeah so that is a little stranger for this week and I mean I guess it's a little stranger is it a little stranger in the house What's going on? Uh, and, you know, just the whole thing of we're getting post-war and, you know, um, Carolyn saying, like, you know, you know, you should think about your your, bro your brother who's so suffering from this stuff. It's like, oh, yes, everyone's always thinking about Roderick. No one's fucking thinking about me. It's like, yes, because and I can see her understandable bit bitterness there because, yeah, she, you know, she was having a life doing something. And then she got called back home to be nursemaid to her brother. She, you know, her, she's probably been asked to sacrifice whatever life she was making for herself outside of the house. Um, and, you know, now she's gotten kind of more inward and inward and probably is probably at an age where, um, knowing about the times, it's like, oh, well, you're just basically an old, you're an older woman now. No one's going to particularly want to marry you or anything. You don't have any money that anyone would want to marry you for all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it, it, uh, you can see why she might have a lot of resentments that way, but yes, we're getting this all from Dr. Faraday's point of view. You know, he is the guy who kind of looked at it as kind of a halcyon place and he's, he's lower class looking at these upper class people who are failing. So he, he's got, he's got both kind of a little bit of a reverence for, but also kind of a bit of a disgust for, and I mean, they have a tendency to use him. I mean, there's a whole thing of Lady Ayers talking to him and kind of um, showing, crying in front of him. But you wonder, are you is she doing this to kind of manipulate him to to get him to do stuff for her? Um, in a way, you know, they 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 know that they've got a little bit of a hook into him, and they've slowly been grooming him. That whole thing at the beginning of making. Uh, Betty into a pearl. It's like, oh, okay, they're training her to be a good maid, or are they training him to be the good doctor, the family doctor for them, um, to do their to do their stuff. So you've, you've kind of all the manipulation that way too. Um, and yeah, just sort of what is he getting out of this? This is where his uh, his family, his mother worked the nursery. Again, the nursery where. Uh, their child died, which is interesting as well. Their child died, and it's like, how, like, you know, so she, her mother, his mother worked with, well, how did, how did their child, their first daughter die? Like, what's gone on there? And are there some lingering resentments there about his mother, Dr. Faraday's mother? I don't know. Or, you know, interesting, interesting. I always want to think of all the little different twists and turns with Sarah Waters because you know she's going to be coming for you. All right. More videos later.